Hey everyone, Blaze here, welcome back to another Let's Talk About. Um, I just got done watching a Virus Buster Surge. This is a 1997 uh, anime series that uh, was produced by JC Staff and directed by, I believe his name was uh, Masashi Obari, who is, I know that the surname's right anyway, but <laughs> uh, he's like known as a pretty prolific character designer in the 90s. He directed a few things, he worked on like uh, Fatal Fury the movie, etc. And yeah, this is a 12 episode uh, sci-fi series. And yeah, it came out in 1997 as I said. Um, so yeah, let's talk about it. Um, <laughs> um, headline for this video is, uh, yeah, this, this isn't going to be overly positive. Um, I had a terrible time uh, with this 12 episode series. Five hours felt like an eternity. Um, and there's many reasons for that, as we'll, we'll get into. <laughs> um, uh, it's worth noting before we get into it though, like the key issue I have with this series, I think, is it has a humongous case of like post-Evangelion disorder, basically. Um, Neon, Neon, uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion kind of was obviously very uh, groundbreaking and uh, uh, it basically took what was very much a traditional giant robot sci-fi uh, formula which had been in anime from like the early 70s with like Mazengazi and you can go way back to the 60s if you like with like um, you know Gigantor or whatever um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, like through the 80s, there have been some experiments. Obviously, Gundam came along and sort of matured the formula a bit. But then Evan Evangelion eventually uh, came along and basically tore, tore up the rule book and said, yeah, this is going to be like an action sci-fi series, but we're going to get into all this psychological, abstract, like, uh, storytelling and tell something that is uh, very uh, deep, I suppose. I'm not a huge fan of Evangelion. I do like it, but... Yeah, like something very different and abstract. And uh, after that, a lot of series in the 90s, and, you know, continuously going forward, I feel like, have uh, taken that, um, you know, that torch and run, run with it. And uh, one of the more earlier examples, I guess you could say, is Virus Buster Surge. <laughs> because this is a series that, while its plot can be somewhat explained simply, and it, there isn't really a lot of depth to it, it decides uh, through in a, in its storytelling to make it incredibly abstract to the point where this show I feel like is so far up its own ass <laughs> it's just like everything is vague any like everything is esoteric every character goes on giant monologues that amount to practically nothing and um yeah this and the show just suffers terribly for it so um, where should we begin? Uh, <laughs> let's just try and basically explain what's going on. So yeah, it's, it's like set, I think like 100 years, 200 years into the future. I can't quite remember. Somewhere around there. And it's set in Neo Hong Kong. <laughs> which I, I always find funny this idea that like, I mean, it makes sense when you watch something sci-fi and you see Neo in front of like, city like neo tokyo neo hong kong like neo new york or something like you say oh that sounds all futuristic sci-fi and cyberpunky and you know uh, <laughs> dystopian future and stuff um but i always find it funny is that like at some point when did that change happen like did someone just come along like a new freaking like a um, mayor of the city or whatever is like I'm going to name it Neo Hong Kong now, like, it sounds really dumb, but I suppose in the 90s maybe it was less dumb, you know, I mean for God's sake the Matrix's main character was called Neo a couple of years later and everyone lapped that up, so um, yeah, but I was always find that a funny thing, but anyway yeah, it's set in like Neo Hong Kong and it follows a group of uh, basically like these super, they're not really superheroes, like this like, uh, they're kind of like the Power Rangers, Super Sentai, like that's basically uh, very much what their uh, suits are based on. They're kind of like these uh, yeah, Super Sentai type uh, characters that go around fighting against these mutated bio-monster type virus things, hence the name of the show. Um, <laughs> and they're not with the government or anything. They seem to be like off to the side, but still relatively powerful. I mean, Neo Hong Kong is kind of like this... Um, 
uh, yeah, it's not like, like lawless in a way, kind of, not really, but sort of. Um, it seems very different to the rest of the world, at least sort of. <laughs> um, and it also seems to be the main focus of these virus monster things that are coming out of people and computers. Like it's basically, and this is all down to this satellite that is up or orbiting around the Earth that no one can get near. I don't. It's one of the things I don't fully ever grasp exactly where it came from. They sort of go into it towards the end of the series, which I won't go into directly anyway. But yeah, they sort of go into it. But yeah, it's like this satellite orbiting the Earth. And it has like this virus on it, so it's called the incubator, and it like sends down these viruses or signals or something that creates all these mutations in computer programs, and you know, that, like people have implants in the future so they can get infected as well, and they turn into all these bio mutant monster things and start killing people. And it's up to like, I mean, you can very much compare it to Bubblegum Crisis in that regard. It's sort of similar when you, you suddenly get these uh, group of characters that all like powered suits and they don't they don't work for the government and all that. It's, it, Bubblegum Crisis is a pretty good uh, footing if you're trying to understand what I'm saying. And yeah, and this group is called Stand, and like I said, they're kind of like the Power Rangers Bubble and Crisis thing. And that's kind of what the show is about. It's about them like taking down these uh, mutated virus monsters or whatever. And um, trying to figure out what the hell's going on, trying to figure out a way to take down this satellite once and for all before it spreads across, before these viruses like spread across the Earth, because I'm pretty sure like the satellite is mainly focused on Hong Kong for now, but there's a greater... Um, chance of it eventually sending all these signals and creating all this havoc uh, around the rest of the world as well. And um, while I'm not sure I probably explained that as well as I could have done, it all could be relatively simple when you think about it. Like you've got a group of heroes that take down these mutated monster things and over the course of 12 episodes uh, they eventually discover a way to take down the main satellite and Bob's your uncle, end of story happy ending like they they saved the world like and <laughs> like the show could so easily be that but again going back to the evangelion thing instead almost every episode is filled with vague pointless talking out of your ass like psychological abstract stuff about the i don't actually know what any of it was about like future humanity fucking soul searching I don't fucking know like there was all sorts of abstract shit going on like at no point throughout the first nine episodes does anyone really spend the time to explain anything that's actually happened like you can follow the basics some of the early episodes are relatively easy to follow say so relatively you kind of have to just have to forego the fact of like okay okay I don't know where these monsters are coming from what is this satellite thing? What the hell's happening? But other than that, like the very basics of they're going over here, they're going to take down the monster. Okay, you can follow that. And then around like five, six, seven, eight, and nine, it's sort of they're still doing similar things, but there's a lot of other stuff going on. <laughs> there's like callbacks to things that you're just not really aware of at all from characters that go on long two minute, three minute spiels, and it's uh, <laughs> it, this show brought out of me possibly the worst emotion you can ever have towards anything especially like uh, any anime at least and that is apathy i just didn't care after a while i just, I just didn't care anymore i just characters were worried about something couldn't give a shit like the show was incon like inco eco yeah, incoherent didn't care like whatever didn't matter like <laughs> Like, was it was a part of the show funny? I don't know, whatever, I didn't care anymore. Uh, it just, anything, like, anything the characters cared about, I couldn't give a crap about after a while. And, um, that's like, that's the thing, you see, because unlike Evangelion, where I feel like it still had its roots set in, like, characters and a world building, at least at the beginning of the series, goes off the rails towards the end, of course, but, like, at the beginning and the moderate part, you care about these characters, like, you know, the meme of Shinji getting the fucking robot wouldn't have come out of Virus Buster Surge because you wouldn't give a shit about Shinji to begin with. You wouldn't be there to, like, have him annoy you or whatever to begin with. You just wouldn't care. Because that's how I felt about every single character in this show. I just didn't care, and that's fucking terrible, <laughs> really. Um, um, what else could we talk about? Uh, <laughs> I'll finish off with like the story part. Like, I'm not going to spoil it as such. I'm just going to say that 
there is an ending, it's somewhat definitive, and possibly the worst sin that the show could have committed, other than creating just complete apathy with me about it, or with it, is uh, the fact that for all its um, flamboyance, for all its esoteric, let's just talk about complete nonsense and be super vague about all these things, in the end, it's very relatively simple what actually ends up happening and it's not too dissimilar to what I talked about about hey let's find out a way of solving this problem eventually and yeah like all the rest of the stuff meant fuck all so yeah the apathy central was totally justified because it had no intention of ever um, <laughs> you know never having a payoff for really any of that stuff at all um, so yeah, it's. I ended up giving this show a 2 out of 10. I thought it was horrible. Uh, damn near appalling. Um, just completely pointless. <laughs> um, and it's a shame, because as I said, the very basic part of superhero type team, m mutated monsters, satellite in the sky causing it all, over a course of like 12 episodes, while fighting these things, they figure it out and maybe eventually save the day. Something like that, relatively simple. They could have been cool, and if you had the world building and the characters to back it up, it could have been an okay show, if not maybe a good show. Instead, with all this grandeur and ambition, it ended up being truly awful. And yeah, I somewhat blame the Evangelion um, uh, boom uh, and the effect that series had on the industry as a whole uh, as yeah one of the reasons for the show being really bad um, <laughs> also the the story like clearly with all the the grandeur that they wanted to do with this show the, the, the show just at 12 episodes it's not long enough it's just not long enough to have all that stuff in it because they just forego any character building and stuff and the characters themselves um, yeah, there, there's not really a lot to remember. I kind of liked uh, Makus just because he was weirdly designed and just somewhat interesting. Everyone else is just sort of blasé and boring. <laughs> just didn't care about any of them. Um, the character designs, the lead director of this show, one of his main um, things he did in the 90s was character designs and uh, yeah I just didn't really like them honestly the, the females have giant eyes they look like wasps <laughs> with these huge eyes that are absolutely ridiculous compared to the rest the proportions of the rest of their face and obviously they have ridiculous like bolt-on breasts and ridiculously thin everywhere else and all that crap like, and that's not too dissimilar to a lot of other anime but they're, the eyes in particular on the females are really weird and like the snaggle tooth, like sometimes where you get like a one tooth sticking out, that's like, like a um, cute thing, I guess. Uh, you you're, you might see it on like one character every five or ten series nowadays, and like maybe a, like ten, fifteen years ago, it would be slightly more common. But in this series, it's on practically every female character, and it's kind of weird. <laughs> um, and then you got the guys, which also down down near look anorexic despite their mus muscle, muscly proportions and stuff, it's just super weird, like, and a lot of the times they like to stand, they're kind of like, you know how Jojo has all, like, the weird way of standing and stuff, like, I feel like this show had a lot of that, and they just, the poses and the stances the characters take while looking, they just damn well look ugly, like, it's certain camera angles, I guess, it's perspective, everything just looks super weird <laughs> and gross. Um, and yeah, in the show, like the animation, um, I kind of like the colours of, I especially like the power suits. I thought those were real, really cool. I think they're called like variable, variable gears, variable gears they were called. Those look really cool. They kind of like remind me of um, upgrades on what you might get for like Gatchaman or Kashan or uh, Hurricane Polymar, that sort of thing, where it's like a mix between just a normal uh, suit but with a little bit more chunky uh, plastics or metals or whatever like they're, they're kind of like a mix between a human mecha like bubblegum crisis thing and like something more like Gatchaman and Kashan and stuff I thought they looked really really cool and I kind of like the animation of them getting in their suits sort of like uh, they're kind of like this more um, 
the initial bit where it all comes on them is it's sort of like this weird like skin thing but the actual when you've got like the metal thing coming down over their face and the visor and stuff that stuff looked really nice when it was animated i enjoyed that bit a lot but um yeah wow this video is almost 15 minutes christ um <laughs> that's way too long but oh well i'll just carry on i'll try and cut these down next time but um what else was there i uh, really liked um, but yeah, I think, well, where was I? Something about the bland animation in the background. Yeah, like the backgrounds were terrible. Like there was so lifeless. Everything was so grey and plain and blue and greeny. Gray. No detail whatsoever. I felt like ninety percent of the show took place in a fucking submarine. That's what it felt like. The whole thing was just lifeless. Um, I like the eye catches. Um, you know the little pictures we get. But where the adverts would have been. I thought those were really cool, they're very 90s, I like those a lot. Uh, they're, they're the sort of thing that, are, sort of artwork I really, really like. Uh, I thought that stuff looked really cool. Um, the opening theme was really good. Um, I like 90s uh, alternative rock and all that sort of stuff, and I, I like the um, opening a lot. Um, I think that's it, really. <laughs> Not a show I would recommend, obviously. Uh, it's not worth your time in the slightest. Uh, Virus Buster Surge was a train wreck. Um, and something that Evangelion is, in my opinion, partly to blame for. I mean, this show is so clearly inspired by it, because, uh, you know, like the big angel sequence in the Evangelion movie and stuff, and all the stuff with um, Adam or Eve, my like underground thing in the TV series. There was a there's a specific shot right at the end of uh, like the last couple of scenes that are in uh, this series that very much mimics pretty much <laughs> all the color, the design, everything. It's like it's such a blatant rip off, and it's sort of like okay, you've sort of worn it on your sleeve this whole time, and now you're just telling everyone it's like, hey, we saw Evangelion too. Great, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, yeah, Virus Buster Surge not recommended ever and um, yeah that's been another let's talk about far too long I hope these aren't always this long but I'd like to do more of them so anyway I'm in blaze thanks for watching and I'll see you next time